Hi, I'm Dr. Mindy Curry, and I'm a naturopathic doctor. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have a small home clinic in Milwaukee. And I've been doing a variety of these videos showing you all how to make uh, various medicines and especially tinctures out of herbs you can find here in the Pacific Northwest. And so today, instead of doing that, we're gonna take a little moment on how to press out these tinctures in your home. You've made some tinctures now. You wanna know, how do I get this stuff out of there? How do I get to the good juice? So we've got a tincture here that's been sitting around for a while. And uh, you can see that tinctures do tend to turn a little brown, especially at the top. And they do, the longer you let them sit, um, you want to take a tincture after you've made it, hopefully you've sh taken and shaken it every so often um, to get all the, the juices flowing around all the herbs. Um, but now you want to strain that out and there's a variety of ways you can do that. Um, some are better than the others and some are easier than the others and more accessible. So we're going to talk about a few ways that you might have of things that you have at home that you could use and also um, things that you can you can get off the Amazon. So here's one way is simply to take a bag. We've got a lot of these bags these days. They're uh, they can be called broth bags. Uh, you could use say a cotton baby's pillowcase. Um, there's a variety of shapes and sizes. This one's a more coarse broth bag. You can use like a an old rice bag. Some of these rice brands come in a nice cloth bag. That's fine. There's even these more synthetic uh, they're vegetable gro uh, bags for that you're supposed to be reusable for the grocery store for your vegetables to store in. Um, these can work okay. They are made out of plastic but yeah. sometimes when you're pressed use what you got. So I'm probably going to use today these ones I bought specifically are these little um, off of Amazon you get a big pack of these these little cotton um, broth bags and the easiest way I guess to press a tincture is you just have a pan you got a broth bag and you pour your tincture into that and squeeze it A little tricky because you got to get the leaves out somehow. So you tend to just stick your fingers in there. There's going to be more than one stage process usually. It's kind of a coarse squeeze and then a finer squeeze. But this stage, <clears throat> try to get as much of the herb in the bag as you actually can. That helps. But it does tend to get a little messy. This is why I use a big pot instead of a small bowl. And here you have it, kind of the most basic way of pressing out a tincture is to put it in the bag and press it, squeeze it. You can get kind of a good twist on it. That's even better, a good twist. These bags will break with you put a lot of twist onto them, but they're pretty good. You can get quite a bit out that way. You can still feel that it's pretty moist. This isn't the most efficient way to get your tincture pressed, but you can do a pretty good job. You're not gonna have dry herbs at the end, but you will, you'll get most of it out. Now I like to pour a little bit of that tincture back in the jar. Swirl it around. 
get all the extra leaves off the sides. <laughs> can be a bit messy. Get the last bits in there. Get another good squeeze again. Now what I have here, it's not uh, completely safe yet. There's still some chunks in there because I was kind of sloppy in getting that done. So there's a, a couple of wheelies that are easy with things that you have around the kitchen to deal with that. Um, one way is you just have, say, one of these, I guess this is a deep fry strainer, but something like this equivalent, a sieve of some sort, you can just kind of pour it through a very fine sieve to get the remaining leaves out. That works pretty good. Now you have a, a quite a nice tincture there. You can go ahead and pour that into your jar. You can do multiple levels of um, cloth if you're really worried about getting every tiny little tidbit out. I'm not. I think the chunks are added value, <laughs> sort of. This is another thing that I really like. It's a uh, straining funnel. I think I got this at New Seasons at some point, but I think you can get them on the internet pretty easy too. It's just got this little, little flippity strainer. Goes into the funnel. Set that up on top of a cup. And much like the other save options you have, you can just take that through there, get the last little bit of your leaves out of there. There were quite a few leaves left in this one. Not worried about squeezing every last drop out of every leaf, but I do want to get best value for my time by squeezing as much out as possible. Try squeezing this one more time, see if any more comes out. Oh, that's pretty dry. This is less dry. But, now again, Got a lovely tincture here. And that's kind of the easy, easiest. And that's good for light amounts of tincture when you have just a, a, a reasonable jar of tincture you're trying to squeeze. You can see you lose a, quite a bit of of the volume when you take out the the herb leaves themselves, but uh, this is what you want—a nice, a nice fluid, well preserved. You can see how dark that was. That started out as a vodka, and now it's definitely extracted quite a lot of that plant material. Just lovely. This one was the uh, the tilia, the linen blossom and leaf tincture. By the way, in case you guys uh. I've been following. So let me clean this up for a second and we'll go through another method because I mean sometimes you've got a larger jar and hand squeezing. Uh, it it really takes time out of you. It takes your your wrists and it just rips them apart. It, so much squeezing if you're going and doing just big large jars, especially if you're trying to do several of them at once as I am today. Um, so we're gonna wanna get a little bit more mechanical with it if we can. Um, 
And we've got a couple options for that to show you. So let me clean this area up just a moment. Okay, I'm back and here we've got something you might have in your kitchen. It's like a kitchen mill, old fashioned, um, kind of food pressy thing. And that is something that can be used to squeeze out a tincture. Now we've got a real large jar here, so see if I can do this without splashing too much. Again, I like to use the liner with the cloth liner because it does make it finer than the holes that are existing there. Ah! That first <laughs> little pour can definitely shake things up. Get that liner in there a little bit better. At first, it's pretty easy. It just pours right through your tincture, very satisfying. And then you get to this, this big sludge of plant material. It's like a swamp in there. But there's still so much good stuff left in there. You wanna to get to it. So you just kinda of start spooning that into your plant mill. At first, I'm gonna just do kind of like I did with the other thing and just do a little hand squeeze. Do that or you'll be here forever. And then we'll use the mill proper. So it's kind of a, another two-stage or three-stage process, depending on how much bits you get into the bottom. Start with just kind of a quick squeeze in the bag. That saves me a lot of time pressing with the little bat. Go ahead and get the rest of this in there. Not being too careful because I know I'm going to change everything up in a moment, anyhow. But it's always nice to start out. Easy. And there's the pressing. Now you can see that that would be a lot more pressing if you were just trying to squeeze the bag by itself. Now let's go ahead and use the features of the mill. Ooh, swampy bag. That's this thing. Get that in there. And you can really press a lot more out the sides. Once again, if I can. them in there. Try to rinse that out. I'm going to rinse the jar out all together. Get the leaves off. 
This one appears to be Ginkgo Biloba. We can set that aside for just a second. It's going to drip a little bit, make a mess sometimes. Oh boy, I spilled. Oh, okay, I always make a mess. <laughs> There we go. Back on. Should have had a... Oh, I could have had an extra bowl. But if you can see, we're really getting quite a bit more out of all these little holes on the side of the press. Or food mill, I should say. Also, you can kind of just leave that there, sitting in that thing and straining for quite a while longer. Let the gravity do it for you. That can be really helpful. I'm sure there's better ways to use this thing, but this is the way I've always kind of done it. <laughs> and yeah, you're just getting quite a bit more out of there. Ideally, you don't want it to go all over the counter, but sometimes it does. Let me clean this mess up, and then I'll talk about a whole different way of pressing my favorite method. But you can see here, so far, we've got quite a bit of this ginkgo tincture. You'll see that different kinds of, of plant material will press out more or less tincture kind of depends on how how wet you made that um, plant material how much wetness was already in it too so give me a second and okay the last press technique I'm going to show you today is my favorite this is my little fruit press and this is works great for herbs and this is I, I heard somebody call it once the the Ferrari of fruit presses but basically, it's an Italian fruit press by Francisco Palumbo. And I've really enjoyed it. It's a pretty simple mechanism. Um, for one thing, herb presses can be very expensive and professional ones. And so, <laughs> way out of reach of most homeowners. But a little fruit press like this, while useful also for pressing out fruit, is not that expensive. I mean, it is a little investment, but you'll see if you can find it, this one on Amazon, fairly affordable, within reason at least. And uh, it really saves your hands a lot of squeeze. Um, and that's good for people who have carpal tunnel or just don't want to ruin their wrists by squeezing things all the time. Now here is a hawthorn berry tincture that I made. And this is a kind of a special tincture in that it's got very high pectin content. And so this one is especially difficult to press because when you open it up, it's basically like a jelly in there. And you, can, you definitely can squeeze it in the old fashioned way, just in a, in a piece of cloth, but it's gonna be more difficult. You're gonna get less out of it. So what we like to do here is use the fruit press. And the fruit press is kind of similar in ways to the other things we have. It's a, a container full of holes. And this one is a container with one hole and one bung for that hole. So I also like to put the cotton in there just to make things press out a little bit finer. And in this one, you can see it's, it's just plain hard. It's a, it's a big jelly. So I'm just going to scoop that in there and then I'm going to use the mechanical action of this lovely little fruit press to press this fruit. This is fruit. This is hawthorn berries. So, But you can definitely use this fruit press for any other kind of tincture. Works excellent, even better on any other kind of tinctures. You can get the tincture so dry you're hardly wasting any of your alcohol and extracting just the maximum you can out of a certain amount of plant. And in herbalism you want to use the least amount of plant possible. You don't want to be just running out there 
chopping down the forest every time you want a cup of tea. So having a highly concentrated extract is great and getting the most out of it. That's even better. Now, basically the idea is to fill this up as much as you can, press it down, add some more, press it down some more. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see some, some juice come out of this hard jelly. It's really quite tough stuff. You can, you can definitely squeeze the juice out of it, but you'll be going through your wrist doing that. Urgh. Keep going. Okay, let's put that in the press. This one you kind of got to maneuver it on there. Take all the loose edges down. Line up the little spout guide. Line that up. And for me, I put it up, up at a higher elevation. Kind of a little contraption set up, I've got set up. Let's see if anything's coming out yet. Still nothing coming out yet, but. <clears throat> start winding on that. We'll see it. It's a screw action. Pushes down the little foot into the herbs. Nothing's coming out yet because I still have the little bung in there. Little stopper in the hole. I'm probably halfway down. You can already see I'm starting to gush tincture right out the bottom of that. The more you let go, the more easy it'll be to spin the foot down. I tend to do it in bursts because it can kind of spurt and make a mess. And sometimes I learn. I guess you're still using your muscles this way, but you're using bigger muscles. And you're getting a much better press than you probably would be able to just squeezing a bag alone. And look how easy that is. Each time it starts to get tight, I release some out the spit, spigot. And then it's easy to go a few more twists again. The liquid itself is a barrier to the screw device. And once I get to a certain level down, it feels pretty tight. I'm going to come and open it all back up again. Spins nicely to release. Pop that out. You can see already what I've got in there is like a pancake, a little pancake of hawthorn berries. Let's uh, put the rest of the pancake batter in there. Chop that up, see if I can get it to pour. Probably not, but maybe. 
Come on. Sometimes that works. Not today. Whatever you do to get the Hawthorne out of your jar, it's legitimate. It's this stuff. It's hard jelly. It's like if Jello was a little bit more solid. And that's what it is. It's a very hard Jello. But you'll get it in there eventually. A little harder because you already have material on there to work with. But you'll be able to press right through that. <clears throat> Got it all in there. Once again, rinse out the jar. Rinse the lid. My boyfriend was noticing the other day that I don't have a canning funnel. That would be perfect to save my butt on all these pourings. Something to put on my Christmas list. Santa, get me a canning funnel. And slide her back in there. Since we have the stopper in the bottom, I can start right here when I'm not on the pot. A little different angle can be nice, but I'm going to want to move it up there. Looks like I'm a little off my guide, but that's okay. Still works. More an amber, liquid amber. Mm, and that smells good too, Hawthorne. Not a very tasty fruit when it's fresh, but once you've processed it a bit, it can be quite pleasant. Kind of like an apple with a little bit of wet sock. An acquired taste, <laughs> or just perfect when you need it. <laughs> Hawthorne tincture isn't exactly delicious, but of the tinctures, it is one of the nicer ones. But you can make a really delightful Hawthorne syrup, though. Different process from another time. There's still going to be a lot of chunks left over in this one because there's a lot of, of the pulp that you're just not going to be able to squeeze out. 
one thing I do kind of like to do sometimes also is just kind of let that hang once I've squeezed it till it's really tight. Sometimes you can get a little bit more to drip out with a little bit of time. So yeah, I'm just going to let that hang there, continue to drip out. Don't want to lose the stopper, but uh, otherwise, let's see if we can get any more out of the ginkgo over here. And it looks like it has gotten some more out down the bottom. Now, I can tell you if I took this here, this stuff that's left in the bottom of this, and I put it in that press, I could squeeze out, I don't know, probably a half a cup, maybe even another cup of liquid. And I'll probably do that once I'm off the camera. <sighs> but I'm going to let that one sit and drain for a little bit longer. But uh, you can definitely see the hawthorn, you're not getting quite as much tincture out of this press because it's so difficult to press the fruit with all the pectin and the fiber and everything in there. But you'll get, you'll get a good plenty amount. I like to mix my hawthorn fruit in with the hawthorn leaf and flower and make a, kind of a more well-rounded hawthorn tincture actually. But uh, this is where I start. I hope it was helpful seeing me squeeze some tinctures for you so you know what to do with all those weird jars I've left you. Um, hopefully you guys have been making them by yourself with the lovely bounty the Pacific Northwest has to offer. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how you squeeze tincture in a few different ways. There's other ways. You can use a potato ricer a little bit. You know, there's a variety of other methods you can use to squeeze your tinctures. But uh, these are the ones that I've found useful with the devices I have in my home. You probably have some of those devices too. See you later.